Would you please stand and let's worship the Lord Jesus Christ? Joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. You have your sheets there. Well, this joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me. Now, Lord, this joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, Lord, this joy that I had. Say it again now, this peace, this peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Now, Lord, it this is peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Well, this peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. This love, this love that I have. Well, church said amen. 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 You may be seated. At this time, we'll take up the offering. And here they come. Bobby said, go ahead. <laughs> Raleigh, Raleigh didn't say anything. <laughs> Bobby says, go ahead. <laughs> let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, we ask you for your protection tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you're always with us and you're, all, and you're always watching over us, Lord. And, and we know, that, Lord, that you protect us in ways that we don't even know. Thank you for Jesus and our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for the word this morning from Daniel and, and Nebuchadnezzar and, and how you got his attention, Lord. We pray, Lord, that our eyes are open to listen to you so that you don't have to hit us in the head to get our attention. Amen. Bless this offering, Lord, that this offering can be used for this church, for this community, so that your word can be taken to a dying and lost world. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Let us sing. As I journey through the land, singing as I go. Pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul, from without, within. But my Lord. to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to Him. He will give me light. Satan stares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leaves word every time. Oh, I want to see him, look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home and life.
good song. Amen. <clears throat> In the garden. <clears throat> Charlie, thank you. You rock. Wait a minute. Yes. There's another song. We got another song? <laughs> we do? Oh. No, no, no. We're, we're good. We're good. Praise God. We, we want to hear what the pastor's got to say. We've got enough songs. Oh, you're kidding. Praise the Lord. Well, you just disappointed everybody. No, 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 no. We got enough. I can feel the spirit. All right. All right. <laughs> Precious Lord. We went over there. I know, we sure did. Well, I did Precious Lord this, this morning, so there you go. <laughs> Man, I have to bring my scaffold to get that scaffold on up to do it. Well, good evening. Well, before we get rolling on tonight's topic, uh, as I've been asked uh, or requested to ask on Sunday evenings, is there any discussion that we want to have about this morning? Uh, before we, yes. Who was reigning the kingdom while Nebuchadnezzar was reigning amok? I, yeah, it could, could, it could have been Daniel. I mean, you know, but but obviously somebody was, and they, you know, they had heard the dream a year earlier, or those that were in the in the know, and and probably heard the voice, you know, that came down, and so they were probably expecting him, you know, in seven years. To, to return when after his madness, but I'm sure there were a lot of other administrators, and who knows, uh, you know, Daniel could have been could have been holding the fort down. Do uh, you think that that Nebuchadnezzar lived out his life as a, a God fearing man? Uh, I, I mean, I think that there's some some pretty good evidence that he was converted at uh, at the end of his life. This is at the end of his life, and it. 
his life ends, at least the record in Daniel, it ends on a high note. You know, I mean, there's a, a lot of... A lot of, lot of bad stuff before, but he, he, he goes out good, which is a good thing. You know, a lot of people start good and end bad like Saul, uh, but, uh, but, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was, was rotten to the core, but, but, but uh, he, he, he ended well. In fact, I read in one of the commentaries, there's an, a, a Chaldean account that after, after this uh, happened, I don't I think he, he didn't live uh, I don't think it wasn't, but maybe a, a couple of years. But on his deathbed, uh, he he made uh, the mention of the fall of the Babylonian kingdom, you know. And so the you know God saying that Babylon would be on top for a while. I mean, he, he you know he he believed it, but but that he he acknowledged that Babylon was going to fall. Um, and and some of the i think the words used after he got out of his madness uh that he he ple- he praised and he blessed god the the tense there was not just like a one-time deal it was like it was a continuous action for the rest of his life even though it might have just been a, a few short years so I, I i i think there's ample evidence we'll find out when we get there but uh i i, I kind of i don't know i, I, I kind of think that that the lord lord chose to save him I like to believe it. Yeah, I I think it's a. Who who got him to change? Huh? Who who got him to change? God did. The, I can't pronounce it. The Nebuch- Nebuch- Nebuchadnezzar. That's why in the notes I just put Neb. So, we just kind of. So uh, what's there? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, yeah. They, they had. I'm, a, I'm sure they. I'm sure with them going through that that fire pit. Had a lot to do with it. Yeah, he, he he had a, a lot of events in life that I'm sure you know was you know was a build up, and it all you know uh, you know culminated in these seven years of madness that obviously he had a recollection of, you know, and because he he knew what happened to him when the Lord brought you know brought him out of it, but. Um, but he, uh, I, I think the Lord, Lord obviously got his attention, and I, I, I think there's pretty good scriptural evidence that the Lord saved him. So, um, so Neb turned out okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I like I said, I, I think so. That's good. But I mean, we don't, you know, it doesn't specifically say that, but it, it, it appears, it appears that way. And like I said, we'll find out when we get there. Yeah. But I think he'll be, he'll be numbered amongst, you know, all the other redeemed sinners. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm waiting but, for the movie. Huh? I'm waiting for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be an interesting conversation in heaven? How was that, dude? You know, I mean, I I can just imagine what eternity is going to be like to, you know, to maybe you know he, he hear about some of this stuff. Hey, well, any, anything else before we get on to our topic tonight? Okay, well, why don't we just start off with a word of prayer, and then we'll kick it off. Our Father, we thank you again for bringing us back tonight. We can sing and pray and uh, give and uh, think about uh, a topic that you have revealed to us uh, in your uh, in your word. Um, some things that are invisible to our, usually to our eyes, but uh, are visible through the eyes of faith. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, last week we um, let me move this over here. Last week um, was kind of a slight introduction into our topic for tonight, when we talked about dinosaurs, aliens, and zombies, uh, and that was kind of in a hope to whet our appetite a little bit about the subject matter of a- of I'm going to say aliens of angels. Might as well say uh, a- aliens. They are seem to be uh, a- a- alien to us. Uh, and I also thought it might be um, a good choice of topic to kind of oh, be a, a little bit of a side aid to us in our study of Daniel, because uh, Daniel is one of the Old Testament books that there's quite a bit in it uh, about angels. We're going to be, you know, r- running into them uh, several different times. These watchers of men, these uh, these angelic beings, and so uh, tonight, uh, what I thought I would do would just be kind of give just a broad 
a general overview on the subject matter of, uh, of angels. So I'm going to try not to park too much because I want to hit just a kind of a variety of subjects or uh, uh, areas real, uh, real quick and just kind of hit some of these so that we may uh, you know, come back to at later times. I really don't know what, what kind of form our study of angels is going to take in the weeks ahead, but I thought tonight we'll just kind of broad brush it uh, and just uh, hit some of, these, uh, some of these topics. If you want to um, chat about them a bit, please feel free to, to jump on in there, but I have uh, several that I just kind of jotted down. Uh, and we'll just uh, we'll just go with it from from there. And then we'll start off at the beginning or the beginning of angels. Uh, that angels uh, are created beings. Uh, they, you know, in some ways we might say they're eternal beings, but they're eternal only moving forward because they they had a beginning. And there are several verses that that uh, uh, tell us this. Job 38, we were, I think we were in Job last week a little bit, and when God is talking to uh, Job, he, as he's questioning Job, he uh, mentions creation, and uh, Job 38, and uh, Job, find it here, Job 38, and listen to verses 4 to 7. Uh, Job 38, 4-7, this is again God talking to Job, and he says, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Again, asking Job, you know, where, well, you know, where were you when, I, you know, when I made all this? Tell me if you have understanding. Who set its measures since you know, or who stretched the line on it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? So here, in, as, as God is talking to Job, and he's talking, you know, just, you weren't even around when I, when I made everything. But, but when he was making life on earth and creating the things on the earth, he does say that the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. That is, uh, it is as if, you know, as when God created the heavens and the earth, maybe it's, you know, in that, the, the heavenly host. And Nehemiah <clears throat> tells us that God made all the hosts of heaven. Um, and so these uh, hosts, these armies of heaven, maybe he made them th uh, at that point. And then when he started making everything else in the subsequent days of creation, that they themselves sang and rejoiced as they observed God in his created work. So, so they were created and then they observed as God created uh, some of the things uh, upon our, uh, some of the things upon our earth. Um, Another verse on this in Nehemiah 9, 6. Uh, again, I think that's that one on uh, the host of heaven. Let's see. Nehemiah 9, 6. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, the heaven of heavens with all their host and the earth and all that is in it and the sea and all that is in it. So God made the heavens. He made the heavens of heaven and all their, their host the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the host is an, are their armies. Uh, that is, the, you made this, this, these beings that would inhabit the heavens. Uh, a psalm in Psalm 48, uh, excuse me, Psalm 148, about verses 2 to 6, the psalmist is calling on all of creation to praise God. And the first order of creation that he mentions is let the angels worship him. Then let the sun, moon, and stars worship him. And then he kind of goes down in order. Uh, well, let me just read it I, since I can't quote it. Uh, Psalm 148, 2-6. to six. Listen to this. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, stars of light. Praise him, highest heavens. The waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. 
So he, he, he's mentioning all these things that God created. And the first thing the psalmist mentioned is that God created these angels. He made you angels, so you, you praise Him. And then He made the sun and moon and stars. You praise Him. And He made the waters. You praise Him. And so I don't know if the psalmist is kind of going down in order of creation, but if he is, he puts angels at the top of the order. Uh, and so we could read between a lot the lines a little bit and say that these angels were, were created, you know, probably somewhere in the, you know, Genesis uh, 1, verses 1 and 2, because they observed the, 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 the rest of creation. That's so, pretty cool, though, they're <laughs> singing, you know. That's oh, yeah, the, the, I mean, creating, yeah, like, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, he, he, he's made these yeah. amazing creatures, yeah. and, and they're on the you know, on the sidelines and the stands and they're observing his work of creation where maybe, you know, he says, let there be light. And he, he, he brings the, the, the earth is without form and void and he makes the land and sea and separates it, you know, and they're, you know, they're into these choirs of these millions upon millions yeah. of these uh, angelic cool. cr cr creatures singing and praising and uh, in joy and adoration at, uh, at God's cr created work. And so they were probably, at least from our, you know, they, they were probably one of the first order of things that God made, at least what has been revealed to us in Scripture. We can only go by what, you know, by what's revealed because guess what? We weren't there. And who knows what was before the angels. We, you know, maybe we'll find out in, in, in eternity. But, but these angels that God made uh, first, you know, we, we think of them as, as everlasting, but that's only from the time they were made forward. They cannot die. We read in Scripture, you know, angels don't die. They are an eternal type of being, not eternal like God, who is eternal from the past. He never had a beginning, but from their beginning, they are eternal and do not uh, do, do, do not die. So, so the age. huh? They don't age. They, yeah, they they, they 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 do not age. You, you read even a, we'll read in a, a Daniel of a, I think they're the only two angels that are called by name, Gabriel and Michael, and they're around in Daniel's time, and boy, they're around in. Uh, they're around in the New Testament time, you know, 600 years later, they're, 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 they're still around, you know, they, I mean, they, they, they do not age, they do not die, they are um, everlasting as far as from the point of their, of, of being made and forward. We, we also can uh, assume about angels, or from, uh, from what the scripture t tells us, uh, that angels are are a higher type of being than us humans. You know, we you know we are tops top of the food chain, if you will, here on the earth. But we're not top of the food chain as far as all the types of beings that God has has made. And angels are a higher life form. Just as we think of the different and variety of kind of life forms that God has made upon the earth, you have the plants uh, and the animals that are below us. Uh, but as plants and animals are to us, so they're lower than us. So we are to angels. We are a lower type of a life form than these uh, life forms that God has made that we think of, uh, of an angelic uh, form. We read in Hebrews 2, verses 6 and 7, you know, what, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that, uh, that, uh, that, that you consider him? But you made him a little lower than the angels. And so, so and the angelic order that God created is a higher order of life. Um, and there's different varieties, as we'll maybe we'll look at in, in later studies, varieties of that kind of angelic or a heavenly spiritual kind of, uh, of, of life. Uh, other just generic or you might say terms or monikers for these angels in the scriptures we read in Job, these angels are referred to as stars. And they're also called the sons of God uh, in, 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 in several several locations. So they're they're called stars, uh, maybe because they're they're shining ones and these higher orders, uh, these these higher beings that God has made. Uh, Jesus tells us in Matthew 18 that these these angelic beings have access uh, and can see the face of God. Uh, he, he says in Matthew 18 and verse 10, he says, be careful not to offend one of their 
uh, one of these little ones, one of these you know young in the faith or these young children, because Jesus says their angels are always beholding the face of God. Like, almost as like God, you and me, you'll get them because look at what they're doing to those kids. You know, I mean, they're, but they're in God's presence. That they are they are such a, an elevated life form that God allows them into His presence to see His face. Even fallen angels uh, we we see have access to the throne of God to see the face of God. As Satan and his array uh, is allowed there uh, until a time in the book of the Revelation, and eventually they will be kicked out of heaven. But uh, this they are higher life forms. Uh, with, uh, with access to God uh, in His uh, presence and His face, which we cannot, uh, you know, we cannot go there. We, we, we cannot see God and live uh, in, our, in, our, in our sinful state. Um, also, by way of a side note, these, these, higher, oh, these higher beings, it seems that God has given them power and authority over the elements of the earth. Uh, seems that they have control over the weather. They have uh, authority over the elements, such as fire and water. Um, there's angels that have control over these elements of the earth. Uh, you know, we may wonder, you know, why is it there's a jet stream? I flew in the jet stream, and why are these the circuits of the waters? Who knows, maybe, that's the angels doing their work yep. uh, because God has, there are angels of the waters and angels of the fire. And, you know, the, God has given these beings oh, authority over the elements uh, that are here, uh, the, 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 that, are, that are here on the earth. And because these angels are, you know, these elevated and higher life forms above us, there is a strong, strong warning in the scripture against the worship of angels. Uh, because men, when they have encountered angels, uh, are compelled to worship them. Um, in fact, let me look at uh, Colossians 2. Uh, uh, Colossians 2. I have verse 18. I thought it was verse 16. But um, let's see here. Colossians 2.18. Yeah, 2.18 is right. Colossians 2.18. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels taking his stand on visions he has seen inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. And so mankind throughout time has, has been tempted to worship angels. I'll mention here in a little bit. This is the origin of every false religion. Okay, is the worship of angels, uh, the worship of these beings that we are warned do not worship these angels. Even the Apostle John, you remember in the book of Revelation, he saw one of these angels and he fell down to worship. And that angel was a holy angel said, don't do it. I'm a servant just like you. Do not worship me. We're not to worship angels. We're not to pray to angels. We're not to seek them out. We're to, you know, uh, and though we are enamored by them because of their exalted and heavenly. I remember a certain song that says, send me an angel. Yeah. Remember that song? I, you know, I, I don't, but, 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 but there is a, as humans, we have a fascination with angels, we you know, and, the, and we are often enamored with yes. them so much that we would want to adore them yeah. and to worship them. And I've there is it. severe, severe warnings. Do not do it. Yeah, there are people's houses where they have so many angels oh, okay. out there. Like, okay. Yeah. And, and then when, and I think, that, you know, angels interact with us. So we'll, but, but we, you know, we are not to, you know, to worship and adore an angel. Though it happens, well, it happens in every false religion. Every false religion is the worship of a fallen angel. Um, but anyway, uh, the, but the, these angels are are spiritual type of a being. When, when God made us, uh, He made us body, soul, and spirit. You know, we we, we have a physicality to us. Uh, we have a soul, a personality. Uh, uh, he breathed into us the, the breath of life. We have a, a spirit. We're a body, soul, spirit unit. Well, the type of creatures that God made that we refer to as angels, they're non-physical as, as, you know, we're a, a physical type of being. 
And so they, they are a spirit being and have a, you might say, a spiritual body. Um, uh, uh, Colossians, in fact, we're still in Colossians. Look at Colossians 1 and verse 16. It talks about things Christ made because Christ is the creator of all things. And it says, For by Him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth. God made a lot of things in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible. God made some invisible things, things that, that aren't perceivable to our, to our naked eyes, visible and invisible, and their thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. There's these thrones, dominions, rulers, and authorities that are invisible to us. It's in a spiritual realm. You might say another dimension, uh, if, if you will. And all things were created through him and uh, through him and for him. You know, so, so 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 Christ made everything, and He made some things that aren't necessarily perceivable to our lo our eyes, and that that are these uh, these immaterial type creatures uh, that, that, that God has, has made. Hebrews 1.14 calls them ministering spirits. Uh, they, are, they are spirits. They are a spiritual type being. Uh, Ephesians 2 speaks of Satan, that he is the prince and the power of the air. You know, as the air is a breath. And we, we can't see the air, but it's there, right? I mean, we're, you know, well, that is the realm in which angels inhabit they inhabit the the invisible spirit breath if you, if you will because that's the type of creature that god has has, has made them and thus because they are a in essence a non-physical but a spiritual type being these spirits can inhabit and influence people or animals. Uh, you see, I mean, many, many examples in the, in the Bible of, you know, people that are possessed by a spirit, even animals that are possessed by a spirit. The opening chapters of the Bible, you have an animal, a serpent, that is inhabited by Satan himself. Uh, you know, because, because of the type of beings they are, they're in the air, the invisible, they are an immaterial, and so they can influence the mind and even in, inhabit the bodies uh, of, of, of people because of who and how God has created them to be. Is that for the good or bad? Uh, you'd say, you know, either one. When you think of the, you know, inhabiting, you know, that's primarily, you'd say, of the evil spirits. Though, um, you know... Uh, Balaam's donkey spoke. But, yeah, I mean, in fact, it's kind of, that's an interesting account because here you have a donkey that was more percept, had, had a better perception of reality than the false prophet Balaam. He could see the angel. He knew what was going on. You know, I, you know, animals sometimes. I mean, what, what is this intuition they have? This, you know, that sometimes they know things. How do they know things? Well, may, maybe that they, they they can see some of these spiritual oh, goings on that we can't. Maybe that's why they, you know, get stirred up before the weather because the angels are affecting the weather because maybe they have a perception that we're blind. You know, blind to who, who knows, but uh, you. Know, you know, that, that, that's a, a great, a great account, and God even enabled the, the, the donkey to, to talk, to rebuke. They said that earthquake in Turkey when it happened, that the dogs were actually moaning out loud and giving a warning, this is about to happen. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, that's, you know, I mean, you know, we, I, I can't go to a verse, but just wondering, you know, why is it that animals have this awareness? Well, you well, know, one part of that is because they, 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 got a, they hear on a different level, they sense on a different level. They hear, they, they, they hear. What we long time before we hear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Get, 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 you know, God has given them senses that we don't have, and maybe they. Well, at least in in Balaam's donkey's case, that donkey had a had a sense of a spirit that was a threat to his master, and he tried to protect his master from this spirit that was that was sent to harm him. Um, 
Uh, but, but even though they are invisible spirits, uh, the breath and have it the air, if, if you will, uh, many uh, uh, accounts in the scripture where they do appear uh, the, uh, and can become visible uh, to, to, to human beings uh, in the scripture, they appear as light. They appear as shining ones. Uh, they are often described as being awesome in appearance and beautiful in appearance, just astounding when, when they are seen, when they, are, they, they, they make themselves known. Um, they are, as when they appear, they can appear as human beings, and I think exclusively in the Bible they are described as men, though I don't think we could ascribe a gender to, to angels, but when they appear, they do appear as men. Um, and, and sometimes when they have appeared and interacted with humanity, sometimes they're noticeable and it's obvious they're an angel. You have these, and they, they know, hey, this is an angel. And, you know, when the, 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 the soldiers at the tomb, you know, the, on the resurrection day, they, they were frightened, you know, they, they, and that they knew that these were some special kind of beings. But sometimes when they appear, uh, they really aren't noticed as any different than any other human being. Um, in, in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, Be careful to show hospitality and to uh, take care of strangers because some have entertained angels unawares. Almost like when, you know, people have helped folks, you know, really not helping a human being, but entertaining an angel that's maybe testing a human being. How are you going to handle this, this situation I'm throwing before you, dude? I often think about this when I see the beggar and I just pass right on by. Oh, I hope he wasn't an angel. And I just, you know, it's like, oh, no, you know. But, uh, uh, but, but he says, hey, you know, be careful to show hospitality because some people have entertained angels, uh, angels unaware. So, so they're the spirit beings, but, but they can make themselves manifest or materialize in a way to where they are visible to us. Yes? When we did disaster relief down at Noble, there was a man <coughs> in this house. It, the fires were, it was for fires. And uh, it was night, and the man was asleep, and somebody knocked on his door and told him to get up because the fire was right at his house, and sure enough, it was burning the corner of his house. And then that man disappeared, and nobody, the, the, nobody knew that description. Nobody, he, uh, nobody could find out anything about him anymore. And that man vows that he thinks it was an angel oh, yeah. saved his life. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're we're probably oblivious to the fact of how many times angels have intervened in our lives, and maybe we were just unaware unaware of it. Um, because there are myriads and myriads of, of angels. Perhaps they are observing us right now. They're watchers. They're, they are watchers. They are watching us and watching the Father to say, should they intervene, you know, in a, in a certain case. Peter was put in jail and God said, okay, go ahead and help him out and you get him out of jail. You know, and an angel appeared. Nobody else saw him, but you know, I mean, the, I mean, they they are here uh, because you know, and God God has made these uh, these amazing uh, higher higher life forms. Uh, we can, uh, I mean, uh, assume and, and pretty much uh, glean glean from Scripture that when God made these <laughs> angels, that initially they were uh, made holy because everything God made was good. Um, but these, these these angels, even though I would say they're they're highly intelligent, though I mean great greater than us, but God has also given them a volition and a will, because we know that a bunch of these angels fell. So it's at some point, at some stage in their existence, there was an opportunity. Uh, for for angels to make a choice, to make a, a dis decision, um, and so uh, an angels are at least put into you know two major groups, or these heavenly beings into two kinds of groups, either elect or holy angels. Uh, 1 Timothy 5.21, it uh, talks about the elect angels or the, the chosen angels. Uh, um, uh, Mark 8.38 speaks of the holy angels. And so this, uh, we know that 
two thirds of the uh, of uh, the angels God reserved for Himself, kept from falling. He chose them or elected them. They did not fall with Satan and the other third of the angels. But a third of the angelic host did fall, and so they are referred to as evil angels or an unclean spirit or an evil spirit. The holy angels are messengers of God doing God's bidding. The unholy angels or the evil angels are messengers of Satan and doing his bidding. Uh, and so... Uh, the, the air is full of messengers of either God or Satan that are working in our world unbeknownst to our visible senses. Uh, but would it doesn't... Would that be demons? Huh? Would that be demons? Yeah, de yeah, de yeah, de yeah, de you know, demons would be the, the, the underlings of, 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 of Satan. Which angels will the uh, saints be judging? Well, that's going to be, I'm going to mention that because, because it's really interesting. We judge angels. When it, I mean, in, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where Paul's getting onto the church, man, I mean, aren't you wise enough to handle some of the, these situations? And, you know, you don't have to go to law courts. You, you, you should be able to do it because don't you know that we're going to judge angels? I have no idea what in the world we're going to judge angels about. And I don't know if it's bad angels or I don't know how you're going to judge a good angel. I, I, I don't really understand that. But he's, the Scripture says that the church is going to judge angels, you know, at, at the very end. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I have no idea, you know. It's just, dude, why did I get in that wreck? You weren't there. I don't know. You know, I, mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Or, but, uh, you know, I don't know what in the world it's going to entail. But, but that's, that's a great point. We, we are actually going to, you know, going, going, to, uh, going to judge angels. Uh, but, but, but these spirit creatures that God made, this higher life form, they are moral beings as, as we are. God, God, God has made us. We're made in God's image. Angels are not made in God's image. But He has made both us and angels moral creatures. He's given us the power of moral choice. Um, and and an angel's moral choice, whenever they, they made that, their choice was certified for eternity. That is, whenever the, the evil angels, the angels that followed Satan, whenever they made their decision to rebel against God and follow Satan, that choice was set in stone. It was certified. They made a moral decision, and God will hold them to that moral decision for all of eternity. It's a little different for us humans. God has given us volition and moral choice, uh, but our decisions aren't certified until death. At death, our decisions are certified for all eternity. Um, you know, and so the redeemed, when we get to heaven, guess what? We'll be like the angels. We'll be unable to sin. You ever, you know, I mean, humanity, the redeemed humanity will never be able to fall. We will never fall into sin because God will certify our redemption. And so just as the elect angels are kept holy, so the elect church and the people of God are kept for all of eternity. Our choice is certified for all of eternity. And those who reject Christ in this world, their decision is also certified for eternity. The redeemed will be unable to sin in eternity, and the damned will be unable to believe in all of eternity. Because our decisions are certified at death, but angels' decisions were certified when they made it. And so, boom, they, they, are, they are set for all of eternity. And so that's an interesting thing about angels, that though they are a higher life form, do you know that with angels there is no such thing as redemption? There is no salvation for an angel. An angel knows nothing of grace. An angel knows nothing of mercy. A fallen angel can never know forgiveness of sin. That, 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 that is something that is totally foreign to the angelic creatures because God certified their decision and there is no second chance for these higher life forms, these angelic life forms. In fact, Hebrews 2 verses uh, 16 says, surely it's not angels God helps, but it's Abraham's descendants. I mean, God, what an amazing privilege for us as human beings made in His image that God has chosen to be so gracious to us to give us a second chance. 
to show mercy and grace and, and an opportunity for redemption and forgiveness because God did not give that to the angelic host. God does not help the angels. Their one decision was certified for all of eternity. And, and, and that, that, that's why uh, 1 Peter 1.12, Peter tells us about salvation. It says, angels long to look into these things. They are amazed by the gospel because they have no gospel. Because they, there is no salvation for angels. There is no second chance. That, that's something we get to enjoy and revel in. And they look upon our, the gospel message that God has graced humanity with and they are blown away because they have no opportunity for the things that God has, 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 you know, has given us. Why God did that? God, God can be merciful to whom He wants and gracious to whom He wants. And He just did not want to show grace to angels, so at least the angels that, that fell. They have no opportunity for salvation, even though they are moral, they are moral beings and moral creatures. Did you say that was 1 Peter 8 and 12? Uh, 1 Peter 1 and verse 12. It, 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 I'll just read it. it. It talks about our salvation, First um, Peter 1.12, and then Peter just puts this little hanger at the end of that verse. Um, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you and uh, in these things which have now been announced to you, uh, who through those who preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things into which angels long to look. The, the, the gospel that the Holy Spirit has sent to, to give us the good news of grace and forgiveness and redemption, angels are just, wow, they are blown away by God's work among sinners because sinful angels get no such opportunity. Uh, you know, in fact, a, a whole, whole host of them already are, are, are put in chains, put in prison. They, you know, they are reserved for, for, you know, for the day of judgment. They get no second chance. And I, I mean, God has no patience with an angel. Um, but oh, I mean, God is so patient with us. Uh, you know, we are we are blessed, blessed indeed. Even though we're lower creatures, uh, we have the opportunity for grace. And lower creatures yet, we're going to judge me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't that weird? Yeah, I, I have no idea how that's going to look, but that's um, um, that, 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 that's that's an odd that's an odd thing. So the fallen angels when when. Uh, um, are locked away right now. Yes, no, no, not all of them, but, but but some of them who committed a certain type of sin and rebellion against humanity, uh, God God uh, dealt with them in, in, a, in a special way. And some of these things we're going to come back to, we might look at in, in more detail, but I just kind of wanted to boom, 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 kind of hit some of these things. Um, I mentioned that, uh, so they're moral beings. Uh, angels are involved in human affairs, uh, though that they are the, the, the heavenly host and in the the air, the spirit realm, we can't uh, see them. That doesn't mean that they're not involved in human affairs. We're going to read in Daniel, they are involved in nations, in politics. They are behind the scenes, moving the levers uh, of power, if you will, influencing them uh, either for good or for bad. They are pro uh, protecting or judging or deceiving, uh, but they are behind every government that exists. But don't pray to them. Uh, no, 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 no. We do not. But but they influence politics. Every president has been influenced by the spirit uh, of the age, uh, if you will. Uh, the scriptures very clearly: angels are involved in wars. God is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. There are angelic armies. There's many, many occasions they are invo involved in human warfare. In fact, there's a, we'll look at it at some point. The one angel goes and wipes out 185,000 Assyrians yeah, because they, they were just a, a little bit boastful. So, you know, the, the captain of the army of the Lord shows up. You know, I mean, I mean, over and over because angels are involved in human affairs. I mean, when, when, when nations go to war against each other and they're shooting each other, and all, there's an angelic battle in, in, you know, in, in, in the background, too. They are involved in human warfare uh, as, God, as, as God sends him. In fact, well, it, one of the most amazing uh, texts, you remember how uh, uh, King Ahab died? Uh, you know, with the, the arrow, you know, at, yeah. you know at, just at random and it just, and it just hit him. The scripture gives us the behind the scenes strategy in the angelic realm 
where God is talking to the evil angels on how that battle is going to happen and how Ahab is going to be enticed into his death. Behind the scenes, we, 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 we get a, a picture of it because angels are involved in human affairs. Angels are involved in protecting the saints, like maybe what uh, you know, Margaret mentioned, you know, how many times in our life. Uh, the evil angels are involved in fighting against the saints. Guess what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers. You know, we have the shield of faith because we are fighting against a spiritual battle, uh, against spiritual uh, against spiritual, enti spiritual entities, easy for me to say. Um, uh, uh, good angels, the holy angels, the elect angels are ministering spirits uh, to the redeemed. Uh, evil angels are deceiving spirits, you know, to deceive, uh, to, to deceive mankind and even try to, to, deceive, uh, to deceive, the, the, deceive the redeemed. Uh, there's even indications that uh, these spirits, these evil spirits, um, even interfere or have interfered with human reproduction. Um, and because of this heinous attack, uh, some angels are imprisoned for this offense. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. Disney right now has a little cartoon out. I think it's called Little Devil. Have you heard about it? Uh, you know, uh, you know, Disney you know, paying for this uh, little cartoon, Little Devil, that's uh, played. And it's about a woman uh, who conceives a child by Satan. Uh, she gives birth to a little girl, and it's about their lives as this 13-year-old girl who is the Antichrist because she has a human mother with the Satan as her father, and it's about their interactions. It's all great stuff for kids and adults to watch, you know. As uh, But... But there's indications in Scripture where, you know, they're, they're making cartoons about it. But there is a reality behind it. As some of these evil spirits have inhabited humanity and even been involved in a reproduction or the reproduction cycle. Uh, uh, who knows that? But anyway, but, but angels are involved in human, uh, human affairs, both evil angels as well as elect angels. Uh, a couple more things here. Angels are involved in the advancement or the hindrance of the gospel. Um, you remember Cornelius, a God-fearer, and he's praying, but he didn't know the gospel. And an angel goes to him and says, hey, dude, you need to go over here to this town. You need to get a hold of Peter, and he's going to give you the gospel. He's going to tell, tell you what you need to know. You know, have, have you, ever, you ever wondered about, well, what about the, the person that's never heard? Guess what? If they want to know, God will send an angel to tell them how they can know. You know, I mean, because angels are involved in the, the proclamation of the gospel. We read in the book of, of Revelation that a great angel will, in a loud voice, will declare the eternal gospel. Um, but evil angels are involved in the hindrance of the gospel. Jesus tells us that Satan comes and steals away the word that has been preached. He steals away the word that has been preached and, and is in the ears and in the heart, and he steals it away so it doesn't take root. Oh, Satan and his uh, demons are very involved in the preaching ministry because they want to steal away God's word that is preached. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 and 15, it says, Satan is an angel of light. Uh, and it's not surprising that his servants are masquerading as servants of righteousness. They look like they're the preacher behind the pulpit because they're, they're out trying to deceive uh, because they are trying to deceive people and keep people from believing the gospel. Second Corinthians. Uh, Second Corinthians, I'll just read it. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 to 15. Um, it says, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Oh boy, got to be careful. When I saw a light. Well, guess what? Satan comes as an angel of light. That's the way he is shown. He's not a dude in a red suit and pitchfork and, you know, what they showed on the, you know, that's not, he's an angel of light. Uh, therefore, it's not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. 
Satan works with preachers. That's why I say test every preacher. Test every one of them. Don't trust us. Uh, test it by the Word of God because Satan works with preachers. Um, and that, that, that's a maybe weird thing for a preacher to say, uh, but I, I, think it's a, I think it's a wise word. And let me just say this, behind every false religion is a fallen angel. Um, maybe that's a, a strong statement. Um, behind, every false. behind every false religion is a fallen angel. Uh, that has seduced someone to worship. I mean, there's what, 7,000 religions or whatever in the world. Behind every one of them is a fallen, a fallen angel. Ah, how did Mormonism come to be? Boy, some angels. You know, an angel Moroni and the angel supposedly Gabriel. How did Islam come to be? Oh, supposedly the, the prophet Muhammad and the, and the angel. We didn't know if it's an angel or devil, but the angel Gabriel. Behind every false religion is a fallen angel that is deceiving people into false worship. Um, that, that's why we're warned in Galatians 1.8. This, this is uh, a warning to remember. Galatians 1.8. Well, verse 7 warns, warns, warns about those that would distort the gospel of Christ. And Paul says in Galatians 1.8, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he's to be accursed. Somebody comes and says, Man, an angel came to me in the dream and told me this, that, or the... Hey, you, you got to better test an angel. Test every preacher and test every angel. Because behind every false religion, behind every heresy, there is an evil angel. Uh, and we are to test everything uh, by, uh, by, the, by the Word of God. Uh, just to, since we're running out of time here, just a couple other things. Uh, angels will be highly involved in the end time events. Um, uh, I think we can expect to see increased demonic as well as angelic activity as time steams toward the end. And maybe this activity will be perceivable to mankind, both either the good angels or the bad angels. I think maybe we're seeing a little bit of taste of that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just like, I mean, some of these people have got to be possessed. Mm -hmm. Some of this stuff that's, that's going on. And I think we're going to see more and more of demonic activity as well as angelic, uh, good angel, uh, angelic activity that, that maybe we can uh, see this uh, spiritual realm a little more, a little more closely. Uh, the Bible is clear that angels are the instruments that God uses to bring judgments upon the earth. Uh, when God says, get them, an angel is the one to, de to deliver uh, the judgment. Angels are the one that escorts uh, humans to their eternal abode, whether it's to heaven or to hell. I remember uh, Lazarus was the angels took him to Abraham's bosom. And at the end, uh, Jesus will send forth his angels to gather together the tares to be burned in the barn. And the angels are, you might say, the, the officers to deliver them to their eternal, uh, their eternal prison. And then as Raleigh mentioned uh, earlier, not only were angels involved in judgment, but the church will be involved in the judgment of angels. Uh, you can read that in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 2, 2, 2, 2 to 3. A weird, a weird kind of thing there on, wow, you mean the redeemed are going to judge angels? I, um, maybe, maybe we can think a little bit about that. But anyway, I, 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 my intent tonight was just kind of in a broad brush, just kind of boom, 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 hit a, a wide variety of things regarding these amazing creatures uh, that the Lord uh, has made. I don't know what form our study will take in the weeks of following. Uh, probably maybe examine uh, some of these accounts in the, in the scripture or some of these uh, uh, areas a little more fully. Uh, in fact, do y'all have any suggestion about any areas of focus? Hey, I, you know, let's talk about this. Anything heard tonight or just something on your own? Uh, anything y'all say, yeah, I'd, I'd kind of like to think about that a little, a little closer. Mm -hmm. Anything? Yes, no? <laughs> well, well I, like I said, uh, we'll... I've got a week to figure out how it's going to work next week, but anyway, so we'll we'll go. For it. Well, in any uh, any discussion about the things I threw out tonight? 
Well, I was thinking about so much so, so much that's going on in Hollywood as far as entertainment, as far as movies, and and they're they're playing a lot with spiritual things now. Oh, yeah. Television is quite a bit more heavier than I've ever seen. Uh, can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Woo! Man, I'm telling you, Lucifer. They had a show called Lucifer as a series. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and yeah, and it, and I I never watched the show. I saw some of the trailers, but I think they got it right because man, they got this handsome looking hunk of a guy, and that he, he you know he, 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 yeah a, I mean and a, a, because he I mean Satan is a beautiful creature, you know that I mean and and so and I'm you know I mean he wouldn't be very you know d d deceitful to come in the you know in, in an ugly in an ugly form. I mean he is. Well, was, it, huh? was it pride his downfall? Yeah, oh, probably be because God made him. I mean, maybe we'll look at some of that in, in Isaiah and Ezekiel. You know, he was such a magnificent creature uh, that he thought, you know, maybe I could uh, rival God Himself. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and I mean, you know, and, and and you know, I'll just throw this out there because sometimes in. <clears throat> I mean, in the church or, you know, the religious realm, some that get really into this, into angels and demons and, you know, we can command the spirits and rebuke Satan and all this stuff. We are warned that we are not to slander celestial beings. And whenever I hear some of these jokers of a preacher and just think they're going to give the devil a black eye and they're just, uh, you know, th this is silliness. We are not to slander celestial beings. In fact, it even the scripture even says Michael himself, when he was warring with Satan, he didn't even bring a slanderous accusation. If Michael the archangel is careful in the way that he speaks about Satan, uh, we ought to be the same because they are higher, a higher form of life than us. We're not to mess around in that realm. We aren't to get into witchcraft and magic in the spirit realm because we we don't mess there. It's forbidden to us. Um, uh, but 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 we got to be really really careful. You, you remember the dudes in the book of Acts? They were like, hey, I want to get on some of this casting out demon stuff and go in. And, you know, seven, seven guys went to cast out demons in one dude, you know, and you know, thought they were hot stuff. And the demon says, okay, I, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who the heck are you? And this one dude put a beating. I mean, you know, he, he just opened a whole can on them and they went out bleeding and naked. Don't, don't, don't mess around in this realm. Uh, you know, we, we, we're, 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 we're not to test the spirits uh, in, in the, we're to test the spirits whether they're good or evil but we are not to, to tempt them and or slander them in any manner but, but anyway we'll, we'll figure out something as we all go on uh, if the Lord gives us next week next week Lord willing we will continue our study in angels well why don't we uh, we'll just end with a word of prayer our Father Lord we thank you that uh, you have made us you've made us in your image uh, we thank you that Though we are rebels from birth uh, and have sinned against you, we thank you for your so magnificent of a love and a grace that you have given us an opportunity uh, to be saved, that you have called us to yourself, that you have not left us in our sin as you did with the fallen angels, but you chose to give us your son so that we could be saved. Uh, we love him, and I ask this in his name. Amen. Amen.